Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV on Playframe and Derman's Adventures in the Sky. Sorry about that little hiatus last week. Things just got a little bit busy and I needed the extra time, but we are back out here in the Sea of Clouds with Alphino and this Vanu who we just helped from Imperials. Let's keep things moving. How are you doing? And so we live to fight another day. That we do. Lonu Vanu would like very much for you to enjoy the hospitality of his village. I too would like that very much also. Lonu Vanu owes much and more to Netherlings. As saviors, as heroes, Zundu welcome you. To village we go. To north, come, come. I'd love that. Oh, I was going to go, but you want to talk first. Okay. So the Garleans were searching for the Archbishop and believed that the Vanu Vanu knew something of his whereabouts. Methods notwithstanding, they may have had the right of it. I conclude that we should accept Lonu Vanu's offer of hospitality and visit his village. I agree. I was going to... Okay, I'll see you there. Ah, I believe I see it. And with an all-new exciting shape of etherite, I really do love... I know I've said it several times, but I really do love how every single different culture in this world has their own aesthetic look to their uh, etherite crystal. It's just so cool. They don't have to do that, but I love that they do. I want to believe Lonuvano is sincere in his intentions. Nevertheless, keep your eyes open, Derman. Like breeze guides leaves to rest, come and lay down your burdens, Netherlings. Lonu Vanu throws wide arms in greeting. Behold, Ak Zundu. A far warmer welcome than the one you received from the Vundu, I think. Ha! Vundu bluster and blow hither and yon, sound and fury like aimless gale. Eh? What unseen lightning begat such thunderous report? There you are. Did you see it? It's that damned flying whale again. The Imperials are after it. Where? The white? I really love that Sky Whale. He's wounded. Whoa. By the Twelve, did the beast just eat that island? Oh, insatiable white, oh, devourer of worlds. Why must you torment us? Bah! Lonu Vanu wastes no more words on his unfathomable deeds. Come, Netherlings, come and break words with Chief of Zundu. I am here to break words. Let's do it. When you described it as a flying feathered whale, I naturally assumed you'd taken some liberties. <laughs> I did not. I was very, very literal. It'll take a lot more than Imperial cannons to bring that beast down. Let's go check this place out. It's lovely. I've already attuned here, just between sessions, just so I didn't forget. The last thing I wanted to do was leave, and then not have an easy way of getting back here. <laughs> and the new merchant names. Zundu fix it, Zundu sell it. I like it. With wisdom deep as nethers and eyes clear as cloudless blue, Sonu Vanu speaks for Zundu. Hearken to his words. Okay. Lead on.
Netherlings deliver Lonu Vanu from claws of steel-shod fiends and prove nobility. He knows not to ignore Zephyr winds and brings before you with all haste. Soft rains to soothe the heart and sunshine to warm. Gratitude of Sonu, chief of Zundu, is boundless. We are honored to meet you, Chief Sonu. I'm Alphino Levier, and these are my companions, Dermin Dirami and Sid Garland. We are come in search of an airship, a flying vessel of the Nethers, which we believe is somewhere in the Cloud Sea. Ah, like to black steel-shod contraption from which you save Lonuvanu. Alas, no. That ship belongs to the Garlean Empire, an old enemy of ours, though not the enemy we're looking for at present. It's a lot to explain. The men we seek wear armor of purest white, and are led by an older man in white robes. Wait, Lonuvanu here tell of these netherlings. You do? Are you certain? As sun rises and falls and returns, we are. Zundu scouts can testify to words of Lonuvanu. Aye, aye. Winds carry purpose of netherlings to our ears as well. Netherlings seek key to Azizla. Now we're getting somewhere. Tell us, Chief Sonu, what exactly is this Azizla? Beware, netherlings, for blackest clouds portend greatest danger. Look not into heart of tempest. There lies ancient birthplace of sin, home of forbidden secrets. To speak more is to call the wind. But the White Devourer's Isle where key is kept. Deep within bowels of mighty Bismarck it lies, beyond reach of the foolhardy. And beyond ours. Rejoice not in his gluttony, Lonu Vanu, for as stone gives way to water and wind, all yields to the White. This he knows, Chief Sonu. Madness of Vundu bodes ill for all Vanu. Ah, it's good to be back. Could we not just leave the key to the Forbidden Land in the island-eating whale's belly? I mean, I can think of worse places to keep it. No? I thought not. No, that would be far too simple. Oh, excuse me. I'm trying to select my friend here. Excuse, excuse me. Alphano has that familiar look in his eye, which can mean only one thing. So, as his law is home to forbidden secrets, accessible only to the bearer of a key which the Archbishop covets, much as I would like to believe it safe within the belly of Bismarck, the Knights of the Heaven's Ward wield primal powers. If we do not slay the whale and clay the key first, or claim the key first, they surely will. Quite how we will go about it is another matter. As was the case in our battle with the Leviathan, we are out of our element, and this time we have far fewer allies to call upon. Be that as it may, our customary approach still holds true. We must begin by learning more about the White. Let us each question the residents of the village, and then regroup and share our findings anon. Sound plan. Let's go make some friends. Starting with you, first friend. If netherlings seek knowledge of the white, then speak to Kunu Vali, foremost keeper of tales. But neglect not to present self with humility and respect. As sun yields to moon and moon to sun, netherlings must greet Kunu Vali with a bow. Can do. Thank you for the heads up on the local etiquette. Do do do. Where are you hiding? I have a bow all whipped up and ready. Um, Kunavali. Oh, there you are. Guess what I got for you? If you guessed bow, you are correct. Zephyr winds at your back and sunshine to warm your brow, traveler from below. Kunuvali, keeper of tales, hears your words and she remembers. In times long ago, in lands elsewhere, before even the cloud sea, the white is one among many. Newborn, he swims beside his many brothers in seas of endless water. But hated the white is, for his brothers are purest black. So great is their contempt, their loathing, that they turn upon him and rend his flesh asunder. And so he falls, only to rise again 
for merciful gods raise him to the heavens, and there he is reborn. The white still longs for the sea to which he cannot return, but in rebirth a splinter of the divine is shared, and so he opens his maw from whence come the clouds, and a new sea is born, home to him alone. Content, he gazes below, and sees others who are as he, hated and hunted. He weeps, and in his benevolence he raises up isles of earth and guides these people to the cloud sea. Such is the tale of his brethren, or his rebirth, and the salvation of the Vanu. May it never be forgot. But this demon which menaces the cloud sea, his rage is that of the Vundu, his hunger that of a wild beast. The isles are his gift to us, yet now he must consume them? Kunuvali knows no tales like this. Thank you for that interesting, like, mythology. That's really cool. So I don't know if I ever mentioned, I may have, in A Realm Reborn, but just to uh, catch you all up. So there is a another side feature in these games, which this playthrough is not going to get into at all, but uh, a lot of these different tribes which we've encountered uh, around the world, the Amalja, the Ixil, uh, ah, oh goodness, who else? The Mughals, the Vanu Vanu, uh, and a variety of others who we've encountered whose names are like the Kobolds, those are another one. There are quest chains attached to all of these, side quest chains, uh, which are kind of like daily repeatable things where you try to, where there's like a tribe of them, a specific tribe of them, that you encounter and meet and kind of grow your reputation with. They tend to be a tribe that sort of is set apart from a lot of the rest of their fellows. Maybe they're a group that uh, stands against the tempering and the embracing of primals that the rest of their fellows have done. Or I think for the Vanu Vanu, it's a little cluster of uh, these Vanu who want to establish a home on a new island and you kind of help them to do that. Uh, with the Ixel, it's like a tribe that's trying to develop their own, like a new, like better than ever flying machine because that's a strength that they've always had. And you like as a crafter, help them to do that. And, it, and doing those side quests, you learn a lot about these different tribes, a lot more about them, which is great. And honestly, I want to do more of those on my own time, just uh, <laughs> on my other character, because it's it's a fun way to learn more about the cultures in this world that you don't get a lot of time with, especially not early on. Uh, and it's kind of nice. I like that they exist. They're a good thing, even though they are repetitive and tedious sometimes to actually do. I find them worth it. Anyway, Sid. Personally, I've seen enough of that flying feathered whale already. Yeah, I understand, but um, the key, though... So, according to the Vanu Vanu, the Sea of Clouds and the Floating Isles were gifts from Bismarck to his people. Gifts which he's taken to eating, yes. Technically within his rights, I suppose, if perhaps a little ungenerous. Gods, huh? <laughs> but what of you, Alphano? Did you learn aught of value? Alas, no. That is, unless you have an interest in the intricacies of Vanu sky fishing. Sky fishing? My gods, that's it. Alphano, my boy, I could kiss you. From what we've observed, Bismarck's a creature of pure instinct, driven primarily by hunger. When wounded by the Imperials, it fled, but not before devouring another island to restore its strength. What I propose is this. We tow a suitably appetizing island through the Sea of Clouds, in essence, fishing for our flying whale. Once we draw Bismarck out of hiding, we shall use dragon killers to fire grapnels into the beast's hide, and then reel it in close, enabling our resident Icon Slayer to engage it directly. A bold plan, Master Garland, but an exceedingly dangerous one. Should Derman fail to subdue the creature, he would almost certainly be eaten, along with the rest of your appetizing island. I also don't like the sound of that part. Oh, he won't fail. And if anything does go wrong, I'll be at the helm of the Enterprise, ready to tow him out of trouble. I wouldn't entrust a task like this to anyone else. Nor I. I trust you have no objections to my joining you as well. Not at all. The more the merrier. Right then. It seems the boys and I have a lot of work to do if the Enterprise is to be ready for our fishing trip. Well, you two need to find me some bait. And not just any island, mind. I want a mouthful at most. Well, all right.
I do not have a better plan than that. Alphano loves it when a plan comes together. Well, you heard Sid. We need an island to bait the hook. By way of a first step, I propose we speak with Chief Sonu. If the Zundur are as concerned by Bismarck's behavior as they've given us to believe, they may well be supportive of our efforts to slay him. Good thinking. I'll get right on it. Hello, we have a plan. Possibly a stupid one. We can but ask. The Tremontaine is upon us. The White feasts, and the Vundu rejoice in his carnage. Hear me, Chief Sonu. This creature which torments you now is not the deity who raised up the floating isles and made a gift of them to you. He's a perversion of your beliefs, given form by the Vundu, a false savior who consumes that which he should rightly safeguard. Yet it need not be in this way, Chief Sonu. We have the power to strike down this imposter, but we must beg of you an island to see it done. Motes against the Tempest. In vain do they struggle. Yet, who is Sonu to speak of what may be? Perhaps even the Tramontane can turn to the um, Ponente. I feel like I'm saying words wrong. Very well, Netherlings. When you're ready, tell Zundu scouts what manner of island you require, and they guide you to it. We shall not fail, Chief Sonu. Of that you have my word. Come, Dermon. Let us see how Sid's preparations are progressing. Right behind you. I could go for another good primal fight. Boss fights in this game are getting more fun. Like, when it comes to gameplay and combat challenges and such, really, like, the devs just get better and better at making interesting, fun uh, fights. Just the further in these expansions we get. The spectacle increases as well. It's just only going to keep on getting better, for the most part. My, that took hardly any time at all. The Ironworks engineers do not disappoint. Our Ishgardian friends have furnished us with dragon killers and ammunition, and I've taken the liberty of procuring a Magitek field generator as well. Rest assured, we've chains to spare, every link forged by the manufactory's mastered craftsmen. If you've any lingering doubts as to their strength, know that they are, were originally intended to bind to dragons, and were not found wanting. It pleases me to inform you that the Vanu Vanu have agreed to furnish us with an island of our choosing. Then all that remains is to confirm the readiness of the poor buggers who will actually be doing the fighting. Dermon, let Wedge know when your party is assembled. Will do. I mean, it's not assembled yet, but I'll do that in a second. Wedge? I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I don't like this plan. I don't like it one little bit, but I can't help being excited all the same. So tell me, Dermon, are you ready to hunt the white whale? I'm a try. After you then, Dermon. All aboard! Yes, yes. Time for another trial. Let me get a crew! And maybe wait until morning so we can get some more good light in here. All right, the sun is up, and we have a full party of people ready to help us out. Let's see, who we got? We got Henri, who will be one of our tanks as a paladin. Yukime, who will be a monk. Uh, Kalinia or Selenia, tell me later which pronunciation is supposed to be, will be our other tank as a gun breaker. Kokoro will be an astrologian, one of our healers. Amaira uh, will be a bard. Navi will also be a bard. And Kagura will be our other healer, another astrologian. Fantastic. Thank you all for joining. Now let's get in there. Inspiration often finds us in surprising ways. So it was that a casual mention of sky fishing helped Sid Garland conceive a plan to lure out Bismarck, the Lord of the Mists, by using the Enterprise to tow an island through the Sea of Clouds. After binding the beast with chains fired from dragon killers, he hopes you can engage it in the traditional fashion. Though the plan is somewhat sound, in theory, there's no telling how effective it'll be in practice. Nevertheless, the engineer has seen you through many dangerous situations in the past, so at least the odds are in your favor. Indeed. I have a good feeling. We'll be fine. So there are some trials in this game that have a very monster hunter-y vibe. This is one of them. But in a good way. Just look how cool that design is too.
Very reminiscent of... <laughs> very reminiscent of Sin in Final Fantasy X, in a way. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. Thank you all very much for joining. Who's ready to fight a Sky Whale? Let's do the thing. So with this one, there's sort of an interesting pace to this fight in that the boss is kind of out of reach right now. Get ready, everyone. Here it comes. We're not always going to be able to hit the boss. And we can put up a little shield like this, to though, to try to protect the integrity of our island. Use the field generator if the island goes, so do you. So, uh, we need to make sure that the boss is not able to do sufficient damage to this island, or the island will break and we'll lose the fight. And that, as you may have been able to guess on your own, would be bad for us. So we need to be put up that shield generator now and then around ourselves to make it so that the island sustains less damage. There we go. Exactly. Much better. And then, when we get the opportunity, we need to fire these dragon killers at the thing from both sides. There we go. And that reels it in. And gives us a short window to jump on and do as much damage as we possibly can. Hit it so hard, so many times. And there we go! Then it gets mad and retreats. What in the seven hells was that? On your guard! Now there's these two monsters, which we need to take down, and we need to keep them separate from each other. I believe they will... I can't remember if they buff each other's damage if they're in close proximity to each other, or if they uh, heal each other in close proximity. In either case, proximity is not a thing that will help us out. Also need to dodge these random cyclones, dodge these random danger puddles. The usual thing in boss fights. And our two tanks are doing a great job of keeping these bosses separate, but also facing in opposite directions so that we damage dealers can be in the center, not getting pummeled. From both sides. Come on, go down. There we go, there's one. Now for the other. Take it down. And don't die, me. This seems to be one of those fights where if you fell off the edge, you could not be raised and you were just out for the duration of the fight. They have patched all of the fights like that in the game now, thank goodness. Thank goodness for those shields. Damn it, we've lost the generator. Now we need to take out some heads. Yeah. Look out for puddles. So for this second half of the fight, throughout the entire thing, the boss will be throwing just different elemental threats at us. Thunder, water, wind. Lots of hurts, but we're reeling it in again. For another round of that good damage. Wear it down.
Got it. And we win! Another primal dispersed. All in a day's work. <laughs> uh, I love this free company. Y'all are great. Thank you all so much for joining. That went fantastic. Much smoother than my first run of this on my main character, where I died very early and just kind of watched the rest of the fight. <laughs> but yes, thank you all very much. And uh, let's get on with the story, shall we? You know, I never was 100% clear on what it was that was helping us restore these connections to the crystals. Worry, light, beloved. all made Darkness, light to none. And, like, don't write it if it's spoilers down there, just we don't want to spoil anyone on anything, but... I never was 100% clear. Like, was it in doing these fights and defeating primals we were just sort of, uh, magically managing to restore that co connection, or is something... watching our progress? Anyway, more important problems right now. So falls the Lord of Mists, as did all others before him. How many times does this make, warrior of light? Ah, how much you have grown. Far beyond the limits of mere mortals. He has what we seek. That he does. The key to Azizla and the secrets of Alag. I see you have regained the blessing of light, albeit at a fraction of its former strength. Hey, I saw it first. Dibs. Hey. My thanks to you, Asian. And to you as well, Warrior of Light, for saving us the effort of slaying Bismarck. Now that the key is within our grasp, the path to the heavens shall at last be laid bare!
our deeds shall the wrongs of antiquity be righted, and man reclaim the reins of history. My, my. That is a place. All right, then. Forgive me, Derman. Had I known what was happening, mayhap I could have done something to stop them. Alas, Wedge and I were still sealed within the engine room and heard naught of the struggle until it was over. And now, for all our efforts, the Archbishop holds the very thing we sought to keep from him. But all is not lost, for we yet live, and we know our destination. Let us give chase and bring an end to their machinations. Yes, let's do. And if, oh, I should leave this party, shouldn't I? Here we go. Yes. Perfect. All right. Thanks for the help, Sid. I know you're eager to get after the Heaven's Ward, but considering what we just put the old girl through, I'd say she's due a little tender loving care. Now, where did I put my hammer? <laughs> Alphano seems determined to put all thoughts of failure aside and turn his mind to the struggles ahead. Though we failed to secure the key, we must not forget that we succeeded in ridding the realm of another primal, and prevented the Vanu Vanu's lands from being consumed in so doing. The Zundu, at least, shall be glad of our deeds this day. Let us go and inform Chief Sonu of our victory. Sid and the others will need a moment to tend to the Enterprise, besides. Sounds like a plan. Let's get back there. Wait, something is amiss. Oh, come on, I'm gone for ten minutes. Imperial troops. And they have already secured the area. Reveal yourselves at once! And there I was, expecting more beastmen. Who are you? I thought his guardians responsible for the disappearance of our scouts, but I see now that I was mistaken. Oh. Just as Wire observed, the Warrior of Light is wont to appear at the most inopportune time. The Warrior of Light? He who bested Van Belsar? It would seem that the famous hero of Eosia seeks as his lard as well. Hardly unexpected. The secrets of the Alagans' power to bind icons to their will could scarcely fail to interest the scions of the Seventh Dawn. You know as well as we what will ensue should these insatiable creatures be allowed to roam free. That their very existence threatens the life of this star. We but disagree on the solution to the problem. Genocide has ever been the Empire's favored recourse. And that is why we will continue to oppose your every attempt to claim Eorzea! You do not hesitate to speak your mind. 
Even when your every word could be your last. Alas, your sentiments betray the narrowness of your view. The fate of Eorzea and its inhabitants is of little concern next to the fate of the world. It is my solemn charge as Emperor to bring the icons to heal. If this requires the extermination of certain elements, then so be it. No, don't! They are not his thralls! from take cover your radiance we must withdraw Shall meet again, warrior of light. On that you have my word. So Garlemald too has designs on Azisla. But why would the Emperor himself elect to lead the expedition? Oh, thanks for that last minute save. Where where are you? There you are. Ah, oh, the armor. I had it sent here as a precautionary measure. Well, okay. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would stand less than 20 paces from the Emperor of Garlemald, Verisos Galvis in the flesh. I assume the commander that accompanied him must be the Legatus of whom the Centurion spoke. Ah, uh, forgive me. This is neither the time nor the place for such idle speculation. Pray, return to the Enterprise at once. It occurs to me that our friends may have run afoul of Imperial forces as well. I have yet to apprise Chief Sonu of all that has occurred, but once I have, we will rejoin you at the airship. Sounds like a plan. I'll get over there. Honestly, it's gonna be a lot faster to do it this way. Gotta remember the powers at my disposal. Hey, Sid. Thank the Twelve you're alive, Dermon. When that battleship appeared and fired on the village, we feared the game was up for you and Alphano. One of the seven hells happened out there. First the Archbishop turns up with an Assian in tow, and now the God's damned Emperor pays us a visit. What is this, a procession of notable bastards? Who's next? The Keeper of the Seventh Bloody Gate. No one so notable, Master Garland. I'm happy to report that the Zundu were overjoyed to learn of Bismarck's demise. Chief Sonu sends his warmest regards, Dermin. There was much talk of westerly winds. Miraculously, none, suffering, uh, none suffered lasting harm during the raid. It would seem the Zundu were taken entirely unawares, and wisely chose to offer no resistance. I sense they have no more to fear from the Empire, for the present, at least. Had the Emperor truly been intent on their extermination, Oxundu would already have been leveled. Plainly, Varys is only interested in reaching Azisla. Speaking of which, if you're all ready to continue the chase, the Enterprise is as well. Shall we? We shall, please. They have such a lead. 
And what will we find at the end of the road? Well, what are we waiting for? I'm just checking in. Judging from Sid's expression, he has news which he believes will please you. My favorite kind of news. Lest you wonder, Wedge was able to calculate the heading indicated by the beam of light emitted by the key. If Azisla lies in that direction, we'll find it. The Soleil may have a lead on us, but she's no Enterprise. We'll catch them. You'll see. Thrilled to hear it. I love how much more expressive your main character is from Heaven's Word On. I did not think that I would ever have occasion to pilot a suit of Magitek armor again. Least of all under these circumstances. My full name is Lucia Go Junius, and I was born a citizen of Garlemald. That explains it. When we first met in Ishgard, I very nearly called you Livia. Livia? Livia Sasjunius? The Tribunus who served under Gaius van Baelsar? Aye, she was my sister. Though we spent little time together. After our parents were killed in an uprising, we were sent to live in different households, setting us on separate paths. Livia felt at home on the battlefield and chose to become a soldier, while I underwent training to become a spy. Then... Ishgard was... My mission. It was believed that Alagan relics of great worth were stored in the vault, and I was sent to investigate. Though I was given little information at the time, I now suspect I was searching for the key we but recently lost. And then I met Sir Emmerich. It was his usefulness to my mission which prompted me to approach him, but I soon found myself drawn to him for other reasons. He too was a prisoner of his past, judged for his heritage as a bastard son of the Archbishop. Yet unlike my sister and I, he did not curse his fate. He simply rose above it. In time, I came to realize that I had found a man worth following, and a new home besides. And when I subsequently confessed all to Sir Emmerich, he was good enough to accept me into his service. I do not question your loyalty to Sir Emmerich. It is your loyalty to your sister which concerns me. I have long been of the opinion that those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. My sister fought for her convictions and for those she held dear. So do I. So must we all. Well, I for one am happy to welcome a fellow Garlean to our merry band. Especially one who can make Magitek armor sing. Chief, we should be getting close. Once we break through those clouds, we'll be right where the light was pointing. Right where Azizla should be. Hold on, everyone! Look! I think that's it! Jeez. 
chief is that Alagan. Aye. There's no mistaking their handiwork. What was that? Some sort of barrier. She won't hold, Chief! She's breaking up! I've lost the auxiliary propeller! Sid, it's no use! We must return to Ishgard and find another way! God damn it all! Why do the Alagans always have to make everything so bloody complicated? Ah, welcome back to Ishgard, everyone. What could be out there that would warrant the personal attention of the Emperor himself? What indeed? God, just thinking about all the repairs we'll have to make has given me a bleeding headache. Y'all are good sports. I wonder, does she have a name? <laughs> really into the armor, are we? Sid's piloting under pressure was a marvel to behold, and may I never have the opportunity to do so again. Ah, we barely finished repairing the damage incurred during our sky fishing trip. On the other hand, any landing you walk away from, as they say. I can only presume the Soleil passed through the barrier unscathed. That would certainly explain why the Vanu called it a key. Yeah. Alphano appears relieved to be standing on solid ground once more. Assuming Sid is correct, and I have no reason to think that he's not, the Vanu's key is required to pass through the barrier protecting Azisla. But even without it, we must find a way to reach the Isle. I shall have everyone convene at the seat of the Lord Commander, that we might discuss how best to proceed. As before, make yourself known to the Guardsman when you arrive, and he'll show you in. Okay, I will meet y'all there. There we are. Let me in. I'm here for the meeting. Ah, you're returned. Sir Emmerich and the others await you within. Fantastic. Hello, others. I swear, wherever there's an elegant ruin, there's trouble just waiting to happen. I suppose that's why they re erected such damnably convoluted defenses around everything. Welcome back, my friend, and pray forgive me my earlier display. I grieve for my son still, and shall continue to do so, but I have resolved to be strong. It is what he would have wished. It is absolutely what he would have wished. If the Empire has an interest in Aziz Law, we have all the more reason to hurry. I would not see its secrets fall into the hands of either the Archbishop or the Emperor. On that we are fully agreed. Though we know little and less of Aziz Law, one thing is plain. The Archbishop and the Garleans cannot be allowed to avail themselves of its secrets. In summary, the Isle owes its lofty position to the industry of the Alagans. And we can be all but certain that the Archbishop and his cronies are enjoying the view from its top. I see. If we are to join them, we will first need to pass through the Isle's etheric barrier, which is, alas, more powerful than most. Powerful enough to make a mess of a perfectly good airship at any rate. As far as I can gather, the barrier mechanism draws ether from the surrounding environment and polarizes its elemental aspect to produce what is, in effect, a wall of lightning. It seems plain that without the Vanu's key, any attempt to reach the Isle will end in failure. Alas, the key was careless enough to leave without us, and I don't think the Vanu keep a spare. Master Garland, Based on your experience, is there no other way that we might breach the barrier? Well, in the past, we've beaten similar barriers by nullifying them with elemental converters. But the one we're up against this time dwarfs all that we've encountered before. The Enterprise simply isn't large enough to bear the requisite amount of crystals. 
I am reminded of the quantity needed to nullify Leviathan's command of the sea. A veritable mountain of crystals that could only be borne by lashing two galleons together to form a twin vessel, scarcely able to propel itself, much less fly. That said, we're not without options. If it isn't feasible to nullify the barrier, we might try piercing it. How? We create a ram of condensed ether and mount it on my ship. There's just one problem. I don't have the faintest idea how to build one. It's going to take a true authority in the field, I reckon. Would that the Archons were still with us. But yesterday evening, I chanced to find Mistress Tataru in unusually high spirits. Assuming I understood her excited ramblings correctly, she has acquired a clue pointing to the whereabouts of one such individual. Ooh. An Archon? Truly? Ha! Fortune favors the righteous, eh? Well then, let's not waste any time. While you go and look for our missing friend, I'll work on modifying the Enterprise. Her hull will need reinforcing to bear the punishment, not to mention a mount for the ramp. Just you wait, my pretty. By the time I'm finished, you'll be an airship reborn. Let's go find us a friend. All right, Tataru. Where are you at? Probably still in the Forgotten Night, yeah? Which is right around... Oh, yeah, it's right here. Next door. Convenient. Tataru! I want to hear the news. Too excited for stairs. She may not spend her days slaying primals, but Tataru's no less a scion than you or me. Full oft has her knack for acquiring information proven vital to our endeavors. You said it. Welcome back, Derman. How goes the mission? Did you manage to catch up with the Archbishop and his cronies? No. Everything went bad, I guess. So you finally arrived at Azisla, only to find your way barred by some sort of barrier. Typical. But it's not all bad news. I've made progress in the search of our friends. Don't worry, Derman. We'll get to Azisla yet. Ah, uh, you always know what to say. Well, let's hear this good news next time. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you Wednesday for some more Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward. Do take care until then, and goodbye, everyone.